On this episode of System Integrators Weekly, I was kind of wrong about Magic Micro last week, which led me to start thinking about gamer culture in general and how it is ruining this industry and cheating you out of your money. All that and more on this episode of System Integrators Weekly. Let's go, nerds! Hello everyone, I'm Brea Thorne. Welcome to SI Weekly. Maybe I should say this, uh, uh, what's up gamers? What's up fellow gamers? What's up gamers? Hi gamer, I'm gamer too, did you know? Um, but you know, I had to pause gaming on my gaming device and gaming PC to do this video about gaming and gaming PCs and gamer culture in general. Actually, I, uh, I've been waiting for Tears of the Kingdom for, for, uh, for years, like just like many of you guys have, and uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. I don't get a lot of time for gaming, but I, I knew I was gonna have to ha save some for this. It was, I was like, yes, they listened, and this and that, and there's so much of this. And then I, I, I saw a rock that was in a weird place, and I was like, oh no. And I went and picked it up, and I heard that sound, that sound. I'm like, no, God! No! Yeah, I wasn't happy, but whatever. Um, it, it's still amazing. But despite all that, I have been thinking a lot about gaming culture in general because last week I made a mistake. I am correcting that this week. Uh, I made a mistake about Magic Mike. <laughs> Row. Um, Magic Mike Row. <laughs> You're a parrot. wizard. No, uh, Magic Mike Row. When I uh, talked about their systems, I completely missed something on their website that's actually pretty important. I put in a pinned comment, it needs to be in a video. So I am, however, also kind of right. I'll explain later, as in later, after I let you know this video is sponsored by VIP CDK Deals. The best place to go when you want to get yourself an OEM Windows license to get rid of that annoying watermark and unlock all the customization Windows has to offer. So instead of paying well over $100 for a retail version of Windows, you can get an OEM key for a fraction of the price. Plus, you can use my code BRAY25 to get a nice fat discount off of the already discounted price. Keep in mind that this is an OEM key that gets attached to this system and cannot be used with another one or if you change your hardware. Make sure you get the right key for your operating system. For more information on how to use CDK deals, click the link in the description saying here's how it works and I'll walk you through the whole thing. Thank you, CDK deals for continuing to support the channel. So, so the Magic Micro thing is not all of it. We're gonna talk about gamer culture in general and what you need to watch out for because, oh man, we have been uh, conditioned. We have, we have been indoctrinated when it comes to gaming culture and uh, I'm, having looked into it a little more, it's, it's, oof, it is pretty gross. First off, a couple disclaimers. This video is being filmed for May 15th. 2023, any pricing and availability that you see here, if you watch this video weeks from now, might have changed or to, you know, products may not be available anymore. Things like that do happen. Just make sure you're watching the latest SI Weekly. Um, and usually my latest video will pop up at the end of the video in the little thing, cards that pop up or little things that pop up. So uh, you can always just scooch to the end if you notice this video is a few weeks old or a few months old and check that out. Also, of course, you can subscribe so that you'll that YouTube will uh, probably feed you any new videos that I come out with, giving you updates on system integrators, pre-builts, um, even things like uh, DIY stuff that, that I'm coming out with here. So yeah, if you wanna subscribe, that's definitely a thing that you can do and I suggest you do that. So the other thing is that I'm gonna talk, uh, uh, this is gonna be very opinion heavy and it always is a bit of opinion heavy, these videos, that's, that's hopefully uh, something you're here for, but uh, this one is not your normal SI Weekly. But yeah, opinions are fine and good and healthy to have and if you have different ones, I'm cool with that. You should be cool with me having different ones. We can all be cool. Uh, and you can be cool and sh uh, politely share your different opinions in the comments below. And uh, yeah, I'm happy I'm happy with that. And uh, of course you can also talk in the Discord and the Tech Discussion channel. Uh, and if you have questions, you have the Tech Questions Forum where you can get help from a very helpful volunteer techie. All my techies out there, love you guys, you're awesome. Thank you for keeping that running. I am barely on Discord these days, almost not at all. I'm very sorry about that. Um, last thing is anything that you buy, uh, whether I say, hey, this looks pretty good or whatever, you are buying at your own risk, yada yada, this is not financial advice. I'm not here to tell you what to get. I'm here to give you information so you can take that information and 
make an informed decision. Uh, just anything that you get, uh, you can buy a pair of socks and they can get cracked in shipping. Not the best example. I think you get what I'm saying. But all this stuff is generally all under warranty and it gets fixed. It's just some people don't like it when things aren't perfect uh, right off the bat. And that's how that goes. If you wanna know how different system integrators uh, fare when it comes to that and how they handle situations when things aren't perfect, you can always go to the SI Testimonials group of channels in the Discord and see what a lot of your fellow Swarmies, if you do join the Swarm, I hope you do, uh, have said about potentially the system integrator you might be interested in. So check that out. Now, let's get into this. So last week I uh, talked about build kits and bare bones PCs. Build kits, of course, are completely non-assembled, grouped up parts, everything you need to build a PC, all sent to you so that you can build it. And for people who are just wanting to get into PC building, that's actually a really good way to go. But sometimes it's not so great because you can't really change much about it. In the, the bigger examples that I showed you guys, you couldn't really change anything. And uh, in the ones where you can change stuff, it's limited. Uh, but that, that video was last week. But one, the one source for bare bones PCs that I covered was this place I'd never heard of, this website I've never heard of called magicmicro.com. Whether it's an intentional play on words for Magic Micro or not, I don't know. I don't know if I would have a movie like that in, you know, inspire my whole business and uh, income, but what, 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 what can I say about anything? My mascot is a fat purple bee. When I looked at these, I pointed out some pretty terrible choices made in the specifications of these. So let's take a look at those now. Um, one one that, that really grinded my gears is uh, was this one here that has a 12700K, an Intel 12th gen i7, 12700K, sitting on an ASRock H610M motherboard. Now, if that grouping of numbers and letters doesn't mean anything to you, um, allow me to elaborate. It's bad. It's a bad combination. Um, that is pretty much the cheapest motherboard with an LGA 1700 socket that you can buy, a uh, consumer motherboard. So um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not kidding. It's, it's way down there. Power delivery is minimal. Uh, there's not even any cooling on the VRMs, no heat sinks in the VRMs because you know, they're good, they, they're fine, they don't really need it. But that 12700K can be pretty power hungry. It's all well and good for me to criticize companies. That's part of my job if I see something that I don't like. Uh, you guys know I've done that plenty of times and sometimes it's actually affected change. And that's pretty cool. The company that I called out for this before was uh, Exotic PC. Uh, Exotic PC has this habit of um, just doing the things that most that that some companies do, and they say, "What the no? Of course, everybody understands that it's blank." Oh no, no, no! Everybody does this. Not really. Let me explain. Okay, so this system right here does this look like a nine hundred and seventy-nine dollar computer to you? No, of course it doesn't. Does it say here that hey? This is with options or that you wouldn't get necessarily the product you see here unless you upgrade stuff or whatever. No, it just shows you this and shows this price. Now, I've had a comment before where it was like, yeah, but you, first you have to customize it. It says customize and add to cart. Oh, okay, is it so hard to click that and then just immediately click add to cart? Because I guarantee you, there are people out there who would see this and see that and be like, that's what I wanted. Customize that, yeah, sure. Add to cart. Mom, bring the credit card. I found my $1,000 PC, and it's not gonna be anything like this. For instance, does this card right here look like a GT 1030 to you? Because that's what that person would get. So that's the problem. That right there, that right there is where I was like, whoa, 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 hold up. Hold up. If you wanna be able to put a price, a starting price. It needs to be a real starting build that someone could legitimately game on. You don't get to do that and just say, yeah, this thing starts at 979. Oh, well, you know, I mean, if you want a good GPU, yeah, that'll be $1,700. What the hell? So I called them out for that. Heck, I'm kind of doing it again. Exotic PC, it was months ago. I don't know if you ever saw that one, but we're talking about it right now. Knock it off. 
I mean, I'm, I, I, I would like to know. Exotic PCs, please reach out to me or say so in the comments. How many people buy the GT 1030? Why do you have them? As a company that sells exotic PCs, why are you selling like a GPU that should go, a, a display adapter that should go maybe in an office PC if there's no integrated graphics and chip? What is a GT 1030 gonna do for your exotic PC, for your exotic customers? Please let me know in the comments or uh, reach out to me. Usually I try to be fair and I wasn't fair because I overlooked something really obvious, a customize button. Oops, I wanna straight up apologize to Magic Micro. I don't know if they pay attention to anything with their name on it. That's generally what marketing departments and companies will do, or if it's the owner, just, just trolling through the internet, trying to see if, they're, if they've been mentioned anywhere. But yeah, I, I wasn't trying to be unfair. And it, I did not even click on it because I didn't, I, I got stuck right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on it. The reason I was looking specifically at the 12th Intel 12th gen bare bones was because these prices seemed really good. So, um, Intel i7 12th gen bare bones one or their model number, B Bones 232. So here we go. You can actually, yes, go in and customize your case, which this does have a mesh front panel, credit where credit is due. Um, processors, you can change your processor. You can even go with a cheaper processor if you want. Um, like with, if you're sticking with that motherboard, go with like a 12400, you'll be fine. So this is the motherboard. Okay, this is the motherboard in question. Just to give you a better look at this. All right, this thing is, first off, they're giving you an ATX case that has an MATX motherboard in there. You guys know that's a pet peeve for me. It's a motherboard that's too small for the case that it's in. We're gonna talk later about what you should be looking for on a gaming PC. What you should want in a gaming PC. That's coming up really soon. We're gonna talk about that. But this right here for the IO, is it's okay for a gaming PC? I'll explain why later. What power supply are they putting in there with a 12700K uh, CPU? Um, a 400 watt power supply. Now you can change that. That's what we're that's what we're here to talk about right now. You can change it and go all the way up to 1200 watts. This is meant to entice people and hook them, right? This is a behavior I've pointed out before, and it's very common, very, very common in anything customizable. You make the base spec as god awful cheap as possible so that you can have a lower entry price, okay? Starting at blah, 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 and then it, you can double it with four clicks if you want to. All you gotta do is add memory, add a GPU, yada, yada. Definitely upgrade the cooler because good Lord, and the, what this came out to on PC Part Picker was $447.95. Their price of $599, 15 to 20% markup is not crazy when that's what you're selling. You're selling that, they're, they're doing partial assembly for you. Basically all the parts they're selling you are assembled, okay? Um, and they give you a warranty, parts and labor. Apparently a three year warranty of parts and labor, which is uh, it's pretty good actually. So kudos on that. But what do they say right here? Custom gaming tower. Look at those lights. You know it's gonna go fast. So that got me thinking about gaming culture in general. Custom gaming tower. Yes, for your gaming five and a quarter inch optical drives. This Magic Micro is not a custom gaming tower. It says right here on your site that this right here is and also, how is it custom? These are mass produced. Are you gonna throw a wrap on there? Are we, are we doing automotive paint? How is this custom? Can you please clarify? This is here for three magic letters, Magic Micro, S-E-O, all right? Search engine optimization for those that don't know. Because they put this on every freaking system, whether it has RGB or airflow or any kind of visual appeal at all, every one of them says custom gaming tower, right? Because then 
you get the words custom and gaming in every description. And that's gonna be like 80 times it's on this page. So when someone goes in and looks for custom gaming PC, that's gonna push this site more toward, towards that, that, that searcher. Is that, a, is that a term? Anyway, look, if, if, you, if you had this system, whether or not it has the literal worst motherboard you can buy for this platform, the worst one. Now, I'm gonna be real. If you built a budget PC with like a 12100 and you got that motherboard, more power to you. But I hope you didn't put a 12700K on there. The easy way to get people to click on your product is to underspec everything as low as possible to get the lowest possible price point there. Okay, and that is a practice that needs to go away. I would never recommend this to anyone. You wouldn't buy this for yourself, Magic Micro. You wouldn't use this for your own PC with that motherboard. You wouldn't do that. I hope you're smarter than that. I hope you have, as a builder, the knowledge and expertise to know how garbage this is. So yeah, I missed the customize button, okay? But if you put a starting spec, you are implicitly saying this is purchasable as a gaming PC. And that's wrong. That is incorrect. You're just objectively way off base here, okay? <laughs> Get good, because you ain't. We're indoctrinated to look at something like this and say, oh yeah, that's gonna perform really great. And then be real surprised when it doesn't perform really great. And it's funny because talking to King from iBuyPower, he said, you know what, that's, that's kind of on us. That's kind of our fault. Because he'll admit they kind of started that trend of just put glass everywhere, put RGB, and it's a gaming PC. And he's not happy about it. <laughs> he's, you know, because it, it's, everybody just took that and ran with it. If it has RGB, it's for gaming. Gaming culture in general is causing, it is absolutely going out of control. Let's talk about gaming culture, okay? All right, so I, you just do a Google search for gamer. This is who they think we are. This is who the marketing departments at these companies think we are or want to be, all right? Um, it just, yeah, like uh, videos like this, my $25,000 gaming setup. No, 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 that is a content creation setup. Stop misusing the word gaming. It is not a gaming setup. If you have a microphone and camera, put my $25,000 streaming setup. Genius, what the hell is wrong with you? Well, I take all of that back because I know exactly what's wrong. It is the YouTube algorithm. If you don't put gaming, nobody's gonna freaking watch it. But yeah, no, this is this is it. This is a distillation of just search gamer, all right? This is a distillation of what these marketing companies either think we are or think we want to be, and we'll shove this down our throats every day. And the problem is, it's working, okay? Gamer products. Here's a gamer bed. Why wouldn't there be a gamer bed, X Rocker? Well, because it's a freaking bed. You sleep in it. It's a sleeper, sleeping bed, not a gaming bed. But no, this is stupid. I hate this. I hate this picture. I don't hate this person. It's not their fault. Ra like, let's look through some of this random stuff here, okay? Uh, eat, sleep, game, repeat. You don't need to do anything else, gamers. Just those four things. But look, like, there's X Rocker makes a battle bunk. Gaming bed, bunk bed with desk. That's actually kind of sick. I would probably rock that. But it could also like just be a desk, like a normal desk. It doesn't have to be black and red. And like, oh look, there's a shelf for all your, all your figurines, all your pop figures. Like, I mean, you buy those, right gamer? It's fine if you like it. And I'm not dissing you if you like that, if you like that aesthetic. It's not the aesthetic I'm talking about. It's the marketing, okay? Daddy's Game Gear, kind of weird, kind of creepy. So they'll take something that has nothing to do with gaming, paint it red and black, or do something like that and call it gaming because they need to sell more units, okay? It's, it's really frustrating. So I guess I'm kind of ranting about that. And I know, I know, I, I, Braythorn's ranting again about something, but look, it's also not just 
really lazy marketing. And I'm gonna say right now, all right, it's not like Asus isn't getting enough flack right now over what's going on, um, deservedly so, but like, I've been complaining about this for a while. This, this is the Asus ROG Strix Z790-E gaming Wi-Fi motherboard, okay? And they've had a, a, a dash F and a dash E gaming motherboard. They've had those two, those two for, you know, for a bit. And um, this is more motherboard than any gamer would ever need. So it goes both ways. There are gaming PCs that have not enough motherboard. And then there's motherboards out there that are way more than a gamer should ever have, okay? I can tell you the power delivery is way more than, than, than you need for almost any CPU, okay? You do not need five M.2 sockets. Let's talk real quick about what a gaming PC actually needs, okay? I talk a lot about motherboard I.O., your input-output. The things on the rear of the motherboard, how many USB ports it has is usually the most important thing. And I'll usually say, like, if you're gonna be streaming, you need more I.O. on the rear. You need a better motherboard with more I.O., yada, yada. But for just a gaming PC, you don't really need that. You got your mouse, you got a keyboard, you got your headset, maybe a USB microphone. Um, it, maybe you'll have something like, you know, a, a little audio, you know, a DAC and amp kind of thing for better audio, whatever. But really, you're talking about five, six USB ports. That's it. This thing has this many. This has 10. 10 USB type A ports and two USB C ports. So that's 12 USB ports. Why? Why? Why do that and put gaming on it? Who, what gamer needs? That's double. That is double what any gamer needs. Wi Fi 6E, totally. Although, if you're doing competitive gaming, do it on Ethernet, okay? Like, this is absolutely, completely excessive. Okay, and this motherboard, this, this motherboard costs, well, around $500. What they'll, what they'll talk about here though, is the aesthetics. Yeah, completely immersive RGB on the heat sinks and like, well, what on the IO cover? Like, okay, if they go with an air cooler, like a large air cooler, NHC 15 or whatever, you're not even gonna see that. The aesthetics, cool. Yeah, that looks really great. Those logos you put there, that's gonna be completely covered, but even you know, if they have anything that's 40 series, it, like, I, I do love a good looking motherboard. But motherboard prices have gotten out of hand. And the marketing towards gamers is just wrong. Now, they do have the tough, gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. That one, more in line. I mean, prices, price creep is the thing, of course. It is more expensive than it used to be. But as far as features go, it's more sensible. Look, completely ignored putting Gen 5 M.2 on the top socket right here. So that's direct PCIe Gen 4 to the CPU. That's perfect, okay? Expansion slots, you get a Gen 5 X16. You got it, like that's it. You can stop using the gaming lo uh, label on anything higher than this. Okay, let's look at connectivity. Look at that, six type A USB ports and two type C ports. This is actually excessive for a game. Plus you got front USB 3.2 Gen 2 type C and the front USB 3.2 Gen 1, that's USB 3.0. There's even a Thunderbolt header on this thing and 2X USB 2.0 headers. So if you have something like an AIO that has, uh, you know, your, your, your GIFs on there for when you want to have animated graphics, then uh, yeah, you could you use one of those or any uh, RGB controller that requires USB, that kind of stuff. It's all here. Everything you need in this motherboard. So yeah, this is a great gaming motherboard. And yes, a lot of the characteristics of your PC Start with the motherboard. The Strix motherboards are over the top. That's kind of their thing. I get that. I get that. Asus, I'm not, I'm not a dummy here, okay? But market it to content creators, streamers, things like that, to stream, like to anything where you need a lot of IO because 
it's just too much. But if you're given that sort of like, oh, hey, well, if you're a gamer, you mean you gotta have this. And if you don't have this, well, you must not be a gamer. This is not the only one that does this. And Asus isn't the only culprit of this, but they label it as a gaming motherboard, which did single them out. I will say that things have improved a little bit over at the uh, Amazon there. If you go to Amazon and you just search gaming PC, you can actually get some decent options right off the bat. Of course, there's the CLX Hathor, which is just a monster with basically, it's basically two PCs in one case. So of course it's gonna be very expensive, but that's for a targeted audience, targeted consumer. But um, no, you're seeing Skytech Shadow gaming PC right here, tons of airflow. Uh, Ryzen 5 3600 with a 3060 for 1094. That's actually a decent deal. It's a good deal. Um, uh, you see CyberPower here, 12700F and a 3060 for 1169. Pretty good. Okay. Uh, and, and actually a higher spec CPU than the Ryzen 5 3600 for only like 70 bucks more. That's these are some good deals here. Okay. And now uh, just the case sucks and it doesn't have any airflow. Uh, but yeah, there you go. But then you see this. Whoa, wait, 289 with a monitor and a really great looking keyboard and mouse and a headset and a remote? The re remote is just, it, it's one of these little bubble button remote. I hate those things. And look at this, this is, this looks, this is awful. So here's the thing though, before, I diss on this too much. I want you to know, I think it's absolutely cool to take a PC that would just go to e-waste, refurbish it and repurpose it, okay? But there, there it is again, GT 1030. In this case, you can't actually put anything but a low profile GPU, but I'd love to think that there are better low profile GPUs than that, come on. But still, 289, and someone's gonna get this and get, if someone's just doing something like League of Legends or just some kind of esports title, you might get away with this at 1080p, okay? And you actually get a mod, but no, this is not what gonna provide the experience that most kids and adults are envisioning when they imagine their gaming PC and what gaming on that is gonna be like. If you guys wanna see a good bundle like that, where it's monitor, keyboard, mouse, and PC. Stay tuned, because I got you. Just look, if, if anything says i7 or i5 and doesn't tell you the, you know, 12100F or whatever, it's, ignore that. It's not giving you enough information. You need to know the generation to know whether it's gonna be good or not. Skytech, y'all are getting a lot of mileage out of the, uh, 3600, Ryzen 5 3600 and uh, 3060 combo there. But hey, someone's gonna have a good experience on that. That's a good combo still. And someone could take that system and upgrade to a 5800X 3D eventually, you know? So yeah, it's, that, that's legitimate, that's better. But you know, I couldn't, I couldn't stop once I started looking at Amazon and I started looking at like gamers, gamer chairs. Gamer chairs, like they, they, they're notoriously very similar designs, same manufacturers, but then they just reskin it. And then you, you have stuff like Secret Lab where it's their own thing. And what the hell are these? What are these? $25,000? What is this abomination? Now, this is better. This is what I like to see when they show highly rated things and then you see mesh. Guys, get a mesh ergo chair, whatever you're gonna get. Get in something that is an ergo chair. No gaming in the name. Take gaming right out of the name. This one says computer gaming, but it doesn't say that first. It says office first, okay? Aesthetics are cool and all, but if you're streaming or something and you're sitting in it, mostly they see your body, your, your, your personage, okay? Not as much the chair. So you gotta take care of yourself. But yeah, oh God, like I dig the colors of this, but these pillows that they throw in there, they're so uncomfortable, man. It's just a backbreaker. I will say that I noticed that DX Racer came out with a mesh line. Thank you guys for doing that. It was much needed. And of course those are higher quality, higher price, whatever, but they sort of, they're one of the brands that sort of started this aesthetic. And um, can't really thank you guys for that. Cause man, all these other companies, it's not your fault, but man, they ran with it. Anyway, that's my rant. All right, I'm done. So apologies to Magic Micro 
for not seeing the customize button. Um, and I apologize to my audience for not seeing it either because what followed after clicking it was hilarious. <laughs> I didn't even realize that it was a 400 watt power supply. Good gravy. So I'm not saying you can't go to Magic Micro and get a bare bones system there. If you're gonna do it, just go to customize and get actual parts that will work really well together because they can't really figure that out themselves. I hope you guys are okay with me ranting. Um, we're gonna, there was probably a lot cut out of this and that's probably for the best, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. And we'll be back to actually recommending things in the next one, uh, next Monday. So I hope you guys have a great week. Also happy Mother's Day for any buttons out there filling that role. Thank you very much for all that you do. And uh, we'll see you next week. Take care.